And welcome everybody to the week 18 episode of this Vikings franchise here. We are in about the end of the right, or we are at the end basically of the regular season of season three. So we're going to go over any of these contract things that we want to offer before the season kind of ends. And we can't really offer anything during the postseason. Michael Pierce, we're basically waiting to see how he regresses. Most likely we won't be bringing him back, but Open to, depending on regression, J.J. Watt, we've said no to. Bradbury, we've said no to. Darasaw, maybe. Again, kind of depends. Not Haven't quite made up my mind yet, there yet. Kendricks, we will most likely be bringing back. We just don't know if it's going to be as a starter or as a backup. To Castro, we've said no. Most likely he will retire. Bynum, we've said no. Same for Cowart. Mund, He's a really he would be a really good backup quarterback and we might bring him back. Not sure if we would do it in the closed free agency or wait till we get to the open free agency. Uh, Will Harris, we've said no to. I would like to offer Joshua Kelly as he's played tremendous for us to finish out this season. So we will be offering him that just whatever he originally was wanting. So we'll offer that. It's about 4.5 mil for two. And he'll take it, so he will be returning. He's been great for us come the end of this season. As saying Basie or Bassie, he's a really good backup zone guy, but we're, we've been trying to lean a little bit more towards man. So we will let him go. May end up bringing him back in open free agency, but go ahead and say no there. And then Trevor Black and Tyrone Leary were undrafted rookies that we brought in, and I would love to keep them around. Trevor Black has done a pretty good job when he's gotten the chance to go out on the field, so we're going to offer him a, a decent uh, contract here, and hopefully he will end up taking it. But it will definitely be lower than what he was originally wanting, I would say. Make this a little bit lower here. I'd like to go for about 4 mil. Three years, four mil sounds pretty good for a backup. If we could just get it down too far. Okay, we'll go three years, 3.99. We'll see if he takes that. And... He just likes the length. Well, we'll end up signing him come... Um, maybe we'll try again in the off season in the closed, but... They definitely should not be wanting much. Tyrone Leary looking for a much more reasonable uh, contract offer here, and I'll show you why I want to bring him in. Why I want to bring him in? He's 21 years old, really good speed, acceleration, pretty good hands, decent uh, starting spot, especially 21 21 years old for short and uh, release. So pretty good attributes there. Would like to keep him around and develop him. So we will offer a three-year deal for. A, the salary that he was wanting, and he should take it, and he will. So he is set to return for a good bit. We'll try to get Trevor Black as well. And with all of those contracts done, we did get two signed. We were hoping for that third, but didn't quite get it with Black. We'll try again, like I said, come the uh, closed free agency, and then if he doesn't take it again when it gets to the open free agency. But the last thing we need to do in this regular season is beat the Seattle Seahawks. <laughs> Welcome to Lumen Field, a field I know pretty well, at least the stadium, as I don't uh, work for a team whose stadium this is, but I work part-time at least for a team who uses this stadium quite often, so I spend quite a lot of time at this field, and it's an interesting stadium if you uh, haven't been, but... We'll talk about that at a different point. Right now, we need to focus on winning this last game. Nick Robinson having a much better year than uh, kind of what we expected we would get out of Saunders. Of course, we did see Saunders a few weeks ago, and we did get the victory over him. Seems like he's turned things around a little bit at the Rams. Less turnovers, but still 
turnovers as Joshua Kelly will get a gain of two on the first down carry. And, of course, he just got his nice new contract offer. And in between episodes, Thurston randomly got three boosts to uh, his, his upgrades. He got three upgrades as we got stuck to DeCastro there. Wonder who they'll give that tackle to. So he's seeing some nice upgrades. And he has a bit more speed than Lucas. So And he could catch the ball. So come the uh, next preseason we might see how well he does maybe at that uh, tight end spot as well get him out in the field a little bit more but that is all talk for the future today again <laughs> we need to focus in on the Seahawks here gonna bring in Dyson for a jet sweep utilize that speed safety does a nice job of getting taking pretty good angle but too much speed there for Dyson gets around him shows a little shake and bake and gets 22 on that jet sweep and one thing I would like uh, Dyson to work on a bit come the offseason is his stamina. Just after that one play, he left the field. So I'd like to see that get better. And Wong Wu, we know he has the speed. We know we, he has pretty good stamina. He gets 14 on his first carry. And last week we saw one good screen pass and then two pretty bad screen passes. We'll see what we're able to do here against the Seahawks. Try to throw him open. And not able to get the broken tackle on 34. We had two blockers there, just neither one decided to block anybody. So we'll change formations here and go to a uh, always handy slant route. <laughs> we run these quite often. Now they, they do a pretty good job of getting the uh, coverage. I don't think we got the feed in, no. It was a nice attempt there from Leach. Just was not able to get the job done. Let's see what we could do here on third down and no blocking in the middle. Quick rush from Hicks there and he will get the sack, dropping us at the 38. We'll maybe attempt the field goal, see how long of a distance it would be. And this would be a 55-yard field goal, so a long one for sure. We know Ku has the leg. It's the accuracy he struggled with a little bit this year, but he hits true for us today. Going to give us the first points of the game, three to zip with a 55-yard field goal. And our defense will take the field their first time of this game. And the Seahawks kind of just have a middle-of-the-road offense, just rushing and passing, both, I think, around like 13-14. So a very kind of just middle-of-the-road, gets the job done when needed kind of a defense here. Going to switch up Smith to run a quarterback spy here as we don't need to blitz three. They go for a run to the outside. Henley not able to get there. Chris Carson will get the first down and a bit more down to the 40. And they'll come back out in a tight formation here. DK to the left, Lockett to the right. And they'll go for another run down the middle. Kendrick's there to help slow him down. Looks like Harrison Smith got the tackle after a gain of about five. I was going to say six because it looked like he got a little bit more. And on second and five, we'll come out in the 46 defense here. Going to bring a bit of a blitz. And J.J. Watt is back in this game. If you guys saw last week, you know that he left the game with a quadricep injury. Back to finish out the regular season here as Harrison Smith gets the tackle for loss on second down. Going to bring up a third and eight. Also, we'll give some credit to Denzel Ward as well. And on third and eight, they'll come out in a shotgun. Three receivers to the left. Looks like they're tight end to the right. We're going to drop out of the double A gap here. Is they're going to go underneath to their running back? It looks like 20. Is that still Penny? No, it is a different guy, Peterson. And they're actually going to say that that was a completion. Don't necessarily agree with that, but either way, fourth down and they should be punting. And following a really good punt, our offense will take the field starting at the 7. So we'll bring Kelly out here, help try to... Make us a little extra room here as he gets four for about a gain of five. And on second and five, we'll bring out Leach and switch out the running backs here. Bringing Wong Wu out, try to stretch the field a little bit here and hit the first gap he can. Cut back. Nice juke move. Number seven comes flying in to get the tackle after a good gain down to the 35. And that's also the last play of the first quarter. First quarter ends three to zip. And for the first play of the second quarter here, we're going to go for a play action. Just taking a look at my receivers just to kind of see what the matchups look like. As we tried, that was definitely not a fumble. I was definitely in the throwing motion. And Wangwu comes back to almost get the tackle. 
Seahawks are in. I really wish that Madden had that forward throwing motion that doesn't allow it to actually be a fumble because definitely hit the passing button to send it to Inwong Wu. But instead, sack, fumble, scoop, and score. And following that sack fumble, we'll retake the field here on offense. Going to go for another play action. Hope for just some better blocking, some better animations here for us. So we're going to need to roll out and try to get... Again, that's not a fumble. He threw it. <laughs> what the heck is going on? Madden, you got to fix your game. I mean, once again, we were throwing this ball. We're going to an an or the uh, not animation into the instant replay here. See, we roll out here. I'm set to throw the ball out of bounds, and he throws the ball forward. He gets hit after it goes forward, and Madden says fumble, scoop, and score. How about your luck? And following a good return from Nwangwu, he's had two good kick returns. Unfortunately, the next play has been sack, fumble, scoop, and scores. We're switching up here. Go with Willie Johnson around the outside here. He's going to get forward for about a gain of 10. They are going to give us the first down. Run a bit of hurry up. And run that uh, fake jet sweep pass play. They do a good job covering it. But we're going to have a wide open Flanagan who hasn't seen the ball too much. But he's going to get us down to the 22. And that is kind of a nice way to answer back to the last two pass plays. Now down to the 22 here. We'll see if uh, Leach can get the outside. Maybe even toss it up to Jefferson. Kind of see what happens. I don't like it. Go underneath. Kelly not able to hold on to that one. Does stay on his feet. <laughs> Granted, if you don't have the ball, it doesn't quite <laughs> matter if you stay on your feet. I'm going to go for the run here following that play. Good blocking up front. Probably should have cut that more to the left. Decent Gary, uh, carry, though, on uh, second down. On third and four here. Going to try to go to the corner. Going to depend on what the outside uh, corner does. She does drop back, so won't be going deep there. Although now he's open, and unfortunately he ran out of the end zone. Will still get us down to the two. And on first and goal here. We're going to go for a power run to the left here. Try to get us in to negate some of those scoop and scores. Kelly fights for it, stretches, and he is in. He deserved that contract extension. He's ran so well for us. Get us a touchdown on the board here. 14 to 10 with a made extra point as we still need to recover a little bit from those fumbles. And the Seahawks offense will take the field up despite not putting a single point on the board so far. So they'll go for a run to the left. Do a nice job of clogging it. He just keeps fighting. He's actually going to get a pretty good carry. Gain of four. And on second and six, they'll come with two tight to the right, two tight ends to the left. We're going to bring another blitz. And we chose the right gap. They're going to still get pretty decent block and get a gain of, I think, another four-ish. And on third and two, another tight formation here, a tight ace formation. We're going to bring the blitz down the middle. Alex Brooks there to get him slowed down at least. And then Denzel Ward will get the actual wrap-up. Nice tag team from them. Fourth and three. They should be punting this one away. And our offense will take the field. Again, we still need to make up for the minus four that we have up on the board right now. Good run from Kelly. Seven rushes so far, 36 yards and a touchdown. We'll also bring Corey Cook out a few times as well today. He did have the fumble in his one and only carry last week. Hopefully he learned his lesson during practice this week. Going to scoot forward for a gain of six on this first carry. Kelly's been running a lot for us the last few weeks, so... Try to use a little bit of Corey Cook here today to just give Kelly a little bit of a break here and there. Because we're trying to stretch this one out. He does a good job of fighting to stay up. Flanagan wasn't quite able to secure that block before he got there. And we'll hit the two-minute warning here. Game still pretty close, 14-10. to 10. Of course, Seattle somehow manages to be up despite not putting a single point on the board with their offense. Two blown calls from the ref, not calling an incompletion, instead calling it a fumble. We'll go third and three. Going to need to utilize the speed of Willie Johnson to get the first down and around the corner. Tiptoes the sideline a bit, down to the 37. And on first and 10. Again, going to run that uh, fake jet sweep here. This time Leach is in. See if he has the wide open look. And they do not. They read that play very well. Just going to roll out here with Robinson, get... Uh, close to the first down 
they're probably going to mark it a little short. And on second and one, we'll bring back out the heavy set here. And go right down the middle with Kelly, who's going to go a little bit to the right. Couldn't quite get past DeCastro. Would have had more room to the outside. And with the clock now under 90 seconds here, going to see if maybe Jefferson could get over the top. No, they do a good job of locking that down. Instead, they're going to go for Flanagan, who gets down to the five and holds on to that one. Now going to spread them out a little bit here. We're going to run to the left with Nwongwu. And we get the block, and he fights for it. And we're in another rushing touchdown. Definitely utilizing the running game a lot this later half of the season, especially with Cook being injured. The other guys have really stepped up and have done extremely well. And also, the line up front doing a good job of getting to the next level. We see Smith getting to the safety, and a couple other guys getting some uh, linebackers. And with that touchdown, we have finally kind of defeated the deficit from those sack fumble scoop and scores, putting us back up by three. Not a whole lot of time remaining as there's another, no, might be a broken. Graves get up, not able to. Russell Wilson has done a tremendous job his entire career of breaking sacks or eluding sacks from the Vikings and making huge plays. This time we at least don't give up yards, but the fact that we didn't make them lose yards. Kind of gave up some yards. We're still going to run some man coverage here, and they're going to have an open 81. wonder if that's still Everett. And indeed, Everett is still their tight end here. So we'll keep an eye on him. Tight ends always seem to do pretty well against us. We'll continue to run some man coverage here. Try to bait him into throwing to Everett. Instead, almost another sack. And he throws that one away right before we get the hit. Now leaves 35 seconds remaining on the clock before halftime. They need three points to tie. A nice job. They Everett definitely beat me, but this time Daniil Hunter finally gets home. He looks around to see if the ref had thrown a, a penalty for just touching Russell Wilson. Nope, luckily not. We'll take the sack. Third and 19, 22 seconds left. And even less because they didn't end up taking a timeout under five seconds. Looks like they are going to run here for the last play. Try to get a big hit there with Henley, but 20 did a nice job of bodying that hit. He'll get a nice gain, and we're going to head into halftime with a three-point advantage, 17-14. Big plays, really, that entire first half, really the big, the big ones for the Seahawks is just the sack fumbles that they ended up getting the scoop and scores. Besides that, they really haven't done much. Their defense has given up some points as well so hopefully we can continue our momentum into the second half as we took a look as we take a look around the league here colts currently up 22 7 against the packers colts did unfortunately beat us earlier in the season with jonathan taylor just running all over in the vegas broncos games vegas doing a good job 24 7 not a whole lot for really to say at all for the broncos unfortunately teddy two gloves two picks in the first half alone, Titans and Bears. Close game. Bears get the win. They move to 10 and 7 on the season. I don't remember them having that many wins, but looks like they're able to turn it around come the second half. Titans drop to 9 and 8. And we will be kicking off to start the second half here. And for some reason, it said I didn't get full power on that, even though I definitely did, but okay. Madden trying to have some fun come week 18 here. Not able to get the big hit there with uh, Willis, or not Willis, Harris. But they'll have a good, good starting spot here at the 34. Defense will need to come to play. And to start the second half for them, they're going to come out two tight ends to the left, two receivers to the right. We're going to slide over our D-line. Going to be a pass play for them. As they're going to find Everett Open, who gets hit pretty well. <laughs> Harrison Smith knocks him off his feet. Gain a five. And on second and five, going to bring a bit of some pressure here. Double A-gap blitz. Slide Hunter back in as he slid out when I tried to just switch over to him. Nice play there made from Alex Brooks in the middle. Gets the stop on Peterson. Another loss. Going to bring up third and nine. And on third and nine, going to come out in the cover six here. I'll play a little bit of corner. Haven't played too much corner this year. Or really just this series at all. As we're having pretty good coverage, going to drop back here with Reed, try to uh, help cover, and they go to the other side. And I think Henley forced that incompletion. Indeed, he did. I've seen them sometimes 
count that as a catch, so I wasn't quite sure. Henley, nice job breaking that one up. Fourth and nine. They should be punting it right to us for our first second half possession. And on first down here, going to come out to run the ball because if we could get everyone blocked up in the middle, we should have plenty of room to run. And we get Ford for about a gain of eight, nine yards. Kelly had to move a little bit to the outside, not fully. I would say probably the B gap. We'll follow that up by changing the play call, actually. They have their outside linebacker where Flanagan is kind of angled to the outside. And typically when that happens, he gets around the edge right away. So instead, Kelly right back down the middle. He gets another good gain for us. And as I've talked about before, Christian Derrissaw shaken up once again. This time doesn't look to be too serious as he will be staying in the game. Or not in the game, but uh, on the field. As that was not where I intended to throw that one. Picked off by 15. A flag is down. We'll see if this counts. And somehow O'Neal was down the field. Well, that'll count. Seattle ball. And the update for Derrissaw is a shoulder strain. We will be putting in Clayton. And I definitely meant to throw to uh, Leach on that last play. And instead I, I accidentally hit A. So, really unfortunate. It ends up being an interception. Alex Brooks gets a sack. Don't see too many from him, but does have his 10th tackle for a loss, which is pretty impressive considering that he hasn't really seen the field as a technical. He's technically a starter, but we play more nickel than anything in the base package. And on second and 22, they're going to come with that stacked receiver to the right. Two tight ends at the line to the left. And they're going to go for a run. A nice cutback from Peterson, who just got smacked by Brooks. And on third and 17, they're going to come out spread. We're going to drop back the DBs a bit here. Play some man coverage. Because they're actually going to go for a draw. Graves there to get the tackle. And a Seattle lineman. Hosit? Maybe? Not quite sure. He is unfortunately down injured, clutching somewhere at his back. And on first and 10 for us, we will take the field 23 at the, at the 23. Going to go for the slant. So we did bring out Dyson as to try to uh, trick them a little bit as we typically go for the jet sweep. He'll get the reception here on the slant and get forward for a pretty good gain. Leach will come back out for him. Again, Dyson struggling a little bit with the stamina come the end of his first NFL season. And Wong Wu's speed saves us there. Definitely could have been tackled in the backfield, but that speed gets him to the outside and gives us a pretty decent gain. Pretty good gain. A gain of nine on the first down play here. I'm going to go back to the play action. Hasn't worked all too favorably for us to, so far today. But we're going to find Chark here. Try to get to the outside and a face mask coming in for number six. That's... Dig, another digs. I can't. Quandre digs, I believe. And it is Quandre digs. We'll take that down to the 11. And following that chunk play plus the flag, we'll bring out Thurston and Lucas. Go back to that heavy set. Run that to the right. Try to get around the edge with Kelly. Shoot back in. Keep fighting for it down to the. They're going to say three. I thought it was closer to the two. And on second and two from the three. We'll go for another goal line run here right down the middle. A nice pickup there from Wilds. Gives us an open lane into the end zone. And Kelly has scored again. Nine rushing touchdowns on the season. And he's kind of our third string running back. Of course, going into this game, the goal was to get the backups in. Currently only up 10. Don't feel too comfortable doing that right now. But if we could get up by another touchdown... I think I would feel a bit more comfortable there. Keenan comes down to get the tackle there on Peterson. And on second and four, they're going to bring in their big number 36 at fullback. Going to spring down our uh, corners here. Nice stop there from Alex Brooks. They do get forward for about a gain of two. And on third and two, looks like time for the bigs to play against the bigs here. Going to slide over our D-line. And they're going to stretch it out. Chris Carson comes in. Haven't seen him too much today. Does not get the first down. Keenan gets the stop basically at the line of scrimmage. And once again, they should be punting this one away. With 21 seconds remaining here in the first, 
I was going to go for a jet sweep with Willie Johnson, but they come out in the double A gap and bring down one of their uh, safeties. So instead, we'll go for a pass here. John, not Johnson, Jefferson. I was thinking of Willie Johnson, but no, Jefferson gets the catch. Nice chunk. And I doubt we'll have enough time to get another play off. We do not. We'll head into the fourth quarter, 24-14. to 14. If we get one more score, we'll start putting in some of the young guys. Or not necessarily young guys, but the backups. And we'll attempt to make that happen on the first play here. Possibly Jefferson, maybe even Flanagan on the wheel. And they do a good job covering all that, so we'll dump it down. And Wong Wu will get out. Just He'll get out. <laughs> out of bounds at the 29, gives us the first down. And I did not mean to call the same play again, so we'll make that adjustment. Go for a play-action rollout here. And we just got smacked. Clayton did not secure the edge. Clark gets the really good hit. <laughs> we'll drop us back to the 37, second and 18. And go for a deep pass here, hopefully. And we're just going to need to scramble for it, get what we can, and out of bounds, a late hit going to come in, too, on number 15. And that is on Deshaun Wilson. Will give us a first down down to the 14. And they're going to have three deep here, even though we're at the 14. Looking for Flanagan here on the angle. Right in between the coverage, holds on to it, and is in. So that'll bring out our backups. Nice pass there from Robinson. The touch on that was perfect. Solid hands from Flanagan. And a tough shoulder to kind of run through some guys there at the end. And mass substitutes have been made. Some guys to uh, take note of, Black and Lamb. Lamb has not seen the field very much at all. And that pass just goes right to Hilton, who starts celebrating immediately. As our offense will take over, but I was going to say, Lamb hasn't seen the field very much. He's another guy very similar to Black, who are kind of edge-slash-DT guys. I guess they do a good enough job. <laughs> they help the defense get a turnover on their first play. Mund will come out here with a new-look offense. And on first down for us, starting at the 25, Corey Cook will be the main running back for the remainder of this game. Probably we'll still see a little bit of some other guys when he needs to be spelled out. Mund, obviously, in at quarterback. And then the receivers are going to be Dyson and Leary on the outside and Johnson on the inside. Starks in at tight end. The offensive line is the same. As we're going to go for Dyson here. Just enough space. Gets the catch. Tackled at the four. And on first and goal, we'll come out with a two tight end set. Thurston out at fullback and slide him over to the left. And we're going to follow behind everyone. See what we get. And that's going to be a Corey Cook touchdown. Had enough momentum and strength to carry him forward, and he will get in for his third rushing touchdown of the season. But as I was trying to say before we got that pick six from Eldra Hilton, or Ezra, no, Eldra Hilton. <laughs> Can't remember. We, we, had, we had an Eldra and an Ezra, and there's a sack. That's Lamb. Like I said, he was the one who's normally a defensive end, but he has the size to play DT, has a bit of strength. He's primarily a pass rusher, and we see it there as he gets, I believe, what could be his first career sack, at least his first of the season. So we have a lot of young pass rush talent out there. The only older one would be Robinson, who's I think probably around 25, 27. Nice hit there from uh, Hawkins on the fullback. The only starters we still have out there are at safety, and that's because they're young. We want to make sure that they have plenty of experience out there, so they are staying in. Henley had an open shot to the backfield. Basie tried to get a good hit. Fullback just bounces off of him, but we get him wrapped up. Fourth and seven. They should be punting this one away. It's also Nick Bodden, who I believe we have in the uh, California Only Challenge, and it looks like they're actually going for it on fourth and seven. Indeed, they are coming out in an empty set. And I did select pass good. Just want to make sure I didn't mess that up. They will definitely be going for a pass, and they're going to have it to number nine, who just ate the shoulder of Hawkins. Hey, if you're going to convert a fourth down, you're going to pay the price, and he paid the price there. 
Probably in, uh, I would think he would go directly into uh, concussion protocol as Keenan does a nice job breaking up that fullback screen. On the outside for corners, we do have, uh, I believe it's Williams, who had that blocked PAT for us a couple weeks ago, and then Bassey or Bassey. Hawkins there to get the tackle on Carson, Cri or yeah, Chris Carson, who they attempted to get the screen to, or they did, but just didn't go for much. And there is the two-minute warning. Only two minutes remaining in the regular season for us. Both of these teams should be heading to the postseason. For us, we have the first round bye for the Seahawks. I believe they're sitting at three, I want to say. As that one should have been picked off, but the this the lack of uh, awareness and play, really, I would say, would be why he did not read that that was going to go clear over the head of the receiver and should have been an interception. This time, he's there to break that one up. Him and Keenan both get a little, a little hip check in on the receiver, and that one will fall incomplete. And just like that, our offense retakes the field on plus side territory. Starting at 33, at the 33 will go Chris Cook, or not Chris Cook, Corey Cook. Think of Chris Carson down the middle. We'll get a gain of three, and if our offense can score, our backup offense would have scored as many points as the Seattle Seahawks, at least in terms of their defense. Going to need to throw this one away because the Seattle Seahawks offense has not scored. And on third and seven, we were going to go for that jet sweep. They bring down that safety. Double A gap look here. They're going to drop out of it, and really bad blocking up front. They had a free rusher, Taylor, around the edge. Corey Cook was not able to pick him up. Sack for them will be or not punting will be kicking the ball field goal attempt coming up this would be a 53 yard field goal for coup and that looks like that'll be good gonna bump up our score 41 to 14. And with a little bit under a minute remaining in this game we'll see what the seahawks can do to round out their regular season most likely will be passing. They're going to find number 16 wide open. Not very good uh, man coverage there from Wilson, who is actually a man cover specialist. He actually has pretty decent man uh, and uh, press ability. They're going to find DK here, his first catch of the day, brought down by Hawkins and Keenan. And that will get them to midfield, 25 seconds remaining. I'm going to change up, go to a... Uh, zone coverage here and drop down here to cover the fullback as they have a plenty of time and they're going to chuck it up that's going to be completed to Everett who's going to get tackled by Henley with all that time you'd sure hope someone up front would get the sack and now 13 seconds remaining we're going to send the double a gap blitz here see if anyone could get around the edge get through the middle that one thrown out of the back of the end zone with that hit not able to put proper touch on it he ends up missing DK out the back. We'll continue to run that same play here. Double A gap blitz. Get Calhoun off the edge. He, why is that one not a sack fumble scoop and score? If you're going to be broken, man, and be broken both ways. <laughs> it's fine. We'll, we're up 41-14. Seven seconds left. They go for the quick pass. There is going to be a late hit there. For us, I dove with Calhoun. I'll take I'll take credit for that one. And with four seconds remaining, first and goal should be the last play of the regular season here. Of course, you know what we're doing. Double A gap blitz. Through the middle, Calhoun. He'll get the sack. End our regular season, I would have thought. No? Okay, apparently they took a, a timeout with point no seconds left. Basically, I'm going to drop out of the coverage here. And that, not a touchdown. Lockett misses that second foot. And that game will end 41-14. And our second team offense outscored the Seahawks' first team offense. Despite, I mean, we did. We also only had to start from the 25 and 33. So we'll put a little asterisk there, I guess. Either way, we get the job done here today. 
putting up more than double their amount of passing yards and almost four times the amount of rushing yards. They did, however, force the three turnovers, two of which shouldn't have been a thing. Since that was their only point scored, they'll allow it. And with that final victory of the regular season, we'll go into the last upgrade of the regular season to Alex Brooks. This is what it's currently looking like. 76 zone coverage with, with a kind of boost, I, probably from morale. I don't think we have any coaching boosts that would boost that. Could work a little bit on the man coverage, but he can't do that specifically. So instead, we'll go with some pass coverage here to make him a scheme fit going into the postseason. He'll get the plus one to awareness, man coverage, and strength, and the plus two to the zone coverage. And after simming on into the postseason, we can see our first matchup will be against NFC North rival, the Chicago Bears. Take a quick look around the rest of the playoffs, see what happened in round one, the wild card. For first, for the NFC, we have the Panthers and Seahawks. Panthers get the victory 28-17. Next up was the San Francisco 49ers and the Chicago Bears. Three against six. Six takes it 21 to 10. And then a close, what should have been a close matchup, four versus five. Cowboys, Rams. Rams move on 42 to 28. Over on the AFC side, the first game, two against seven. Two beat seven. The Titans take down the Browns 28 to 20. Number three moves on in the, in the three to six matchup. Colts beat the Bengals 24 17. And very similarly in the, to the NFC, AFC 4th and 5th, Chiefs beat the Patriots 49-21. to So in the divisional round, we will have us versus the Bears, Panthers versus the Rams, Colts versus Chiefs, and Raiders versus Titans. Now, I don't necessarily want to play against the Colts because their running game was ridiculous. I would love to have a matchup against the Rams in the NFC Championship. Saunders versus his team. Once again, we really destroyed them earlier. Obviously, doesn't always happen the same come the second game around. So, not quite sure. But first one we need to focus on is the Bears, which haven't. I don't think they've beat us in about three games. Or was it earlier this year that we found out they had a really good receiver? I can't remember at this point, but either way, that's the next matchup we need to focus on. To make sure you check this, check out this game, make sure hitting that subscription button below and taking that bell notification to be notified of when these are posted. Or you can follow me on, on Twitter, BigBearB underscore gaming, always linked in the description below. Yeah, we're finally in postseason, wrapping out the regular or wrapping out the regular season today, hoping to get another Super Bowl championship in this one. It would be three in a row, and then a lot of changes would be happening come this post or not past this post, the post post. So the the off season. <laughs> but yeah, hope you guys are enjoying this series. And if you haven't checked out the California only challenge, I suggest you do. A lot of fun happening over there. So uh, yeah, hope you guys are enjoying this channel all the series that are happening and to the series that will happen in the future. But yeah, until next time, we'll see you guys later. Bye.